Summer Runners! Uh, Coach Crane here. It's good to talk with you uh, from Thailand. I hope that you're having a great summer. I hope that you are able to get out and do something to run some miles and just build up your base. Um, this is the first of a series of videos that I wanted to make to help you be prepared and also give you some expectations regarding cross country in the fall. Uh, we want again you, for you to be fast but to have fun and just you know to have great time with your friends during the season and one of the ways we do that is by making sure that you are indeed prepared. Um, so today we're going to deal with the idea of equipment. Now equipment will start uh, with eight essential pieces of equipment. Now there's a couple here that are iffy that people would say oh they're not really essential I personally kind of consider them as such. Um, similarly, uh, I'm sure there's other things that you might want to add to it, but um, this is a type of video that you could show to your parents and you, they could say, hey, you know, Coach Crane said that's what I should get. All right, so feel free to use me in that capacity. Um, so let's get started. Number one, we have a running hat. It's a nice mesh cap. It's dry, quick dry. I got this from Sportsmaster. It's got a headband to get the sweat so it doesn't go in my eye. Um, this one's made by Nike, but again, um, it's not about brand. It's about whether or not it works. And so, you know, these, this one works real well. Literally, I can go ahead and I can wash this in the shower right after my run, hang it up to dry, wear it the next day, and then throw it in the laundry maybe once a week or so. Okay. Um, second one is one of those controversial ones. Uh, I'm talking about sunglasses. You might say, oh, you don't always need sunglasses. Sometimes it gets dark outside. Well, that's true. Yes, sunglasses are designed to go ahead and, and help you to, you know, limit the amount of sun exposure to your eye. However, they also protect your eye from anything that's flying in the air. I speak specifically about things like from the exhaust of cars, from a quick breeze, from a swarm of flies or mosquitoes, from a bee. Uh, I, went, I once was running and almost at the end of my run a bee came and, and got me right there. I wasn't wearing my sunglasses. I've worn my sunglasses virtually every run since then. Um, because again, they're almost like goggles for your eyes while you're running. All right, so as we think about this, number three would be, and we want to think about comfort here. It's not about brands. It's about the usability. It's not about fashion. It's about whether or not it works. So Mizuno went ahead and it came up with a soccer shirt. Um, you know, it's a very bright orange shirt, but it's still, it's real comfortable. It's a mesh type material, an athletic wear, and it, it uh, goes ahead and takes the sweat off your skin real easily. It dries real quickly. Um, and it's comfortable and movable so that when you're going like this you don't have to worry about too much for chafing underneath your arms or on your nipple. Same basic idea with running shorts. You do not want to run in regular shorts. You do not want to run in boxers or briefs. You want to run in shorts that actually have their own um, inside uh, layer for, your, for yourself so that when you end up going ahead and again wearing these you're not going to chafe down there and it's going to be nice and free and airy and it's going to wick away the sweat and such so there are specific types of running shorts that you'll want to get now the length of those running shorts depends upon what you're comfortable with and what's appropriate um, so you want to be careful to make sure and like put them up, to me, up next to your side when you end up going ahead and trying them on so, for example, oh, excuse me. Um, I come back here, I put this just up where it would start, and I know that these shorts are going to come down to about here on me. All right? So that's acceptable. I wouldn't want shorts that come up to here. That's way too short. Uh, although, frankly, I do have a pair like that, but I just, I, didn't, I accidentally bought them. So I never wear them outside because it's just embarrassing. Um, so, you know, there's lots of various types of running shorts. You don't want to have basketball shorts that go all the way to your knee because it doesn't allow your, your, uh, your legs to move as much as they could. Um, 
A watch. You want to have a running watch. Yes, having some kind of stopwatch is important, but even so, there's other features on a running watch that you want to have. It's more than just obviously telling you the time. It's also telling you things such as lap times. Okay? And there's also the idea that it'll end up a good running watch, and again, this is a good one. It's a, I've had this type of one for years. It's a Timex Ironman Triathlon Series. Um, it has what's called an interval timer, or maybe it might be called dual interval timer. And essentially, it allows me to have two different time frames in which it'll cycle around. So I can have this beeping after eight minutes, and then giving me a one-minute break and then beeping after that one minute break and then restarting the cycle and starting back on the eight minutes so that I can go run eight minutes, walk one minute, run eight minutes, walk one minute, etc. repeatedly. And so that's a real good um, tool for regulating your training and helping you to um, just get regular water and um, just taking care of your body. Okay? Um, a water bottle holder of some kind. This one is more like a hiking one, but it works real well. It's much bigger than I actually need most of the time, but I could throw my phone in here, my keys, I can put workout gloves, I can make sure I have my wallet, maybe some money if I wanted to buy something at the store. Um, there's a large number of stuff, and of course I could put water bottles. Uh, this one, I, it holds two water bottles. Uh, it doesn't. It's not about how many water bottles it holds or the size of them, but you know, just being able to have something so that you can hold your personal stuff and hopefully some water if you need it during a run, especially a longer run. Uh, number seven is uh, running socks. Now, athletic socks are good in general, so you know, probably any athletic sock will do. Um, I think about the idea that this sock right here, for example, is fitted to a specific range of shoe sizes, all right? It's not just a crew neck sock or uh, I forget what they're called, free size or I can't think of what they're called right now. But the idea is that it ends up going ahead, it's fitted to your, sh your foot. Um, and it also has in the middle here, right around your arch area, it has an elastic area that's there to support your arch. Um, you know, the more support for your arch, probably the better are you all are off um, in general. I, there's a lot of people that have arch problems um, and so having a running sock like that will help them. Um, I did forget to say one thing. When I talk about running watch, I know some of you may be interested in stuff like a GPS watch. Um, this, this is good, but again remember I said essentials. This is an essential. If you can time your run, that's good enough. Okay. Uh, you can express your run in terms of time or distance or both if you have a, a GPS watch or you already know the route and such. Um, GPS watches, they give you a lot of data so that they're good, but they're expensive. And hopefully they last for a long time. Like this one lasted me a good four or five years and then one of the buttons broke and so it doesn't work anymore and I just haven't gotten a new one. But uh, getting something like that is, is a good idea. Now. Last one, shoes. All right, I got about a minute to go over shoes, hopefully. All right, I wear orthotics. They're specialized insoles. All right, some of you may also do so. But it, um, the idea with a running shoe, it needs to be a running shoe. It's not a basketball shoe. It's not just a tennis shoe. It's actually a running shoe. And there are three main companies, five of which I'll list um, that I would buy running shoes from. I would probably would, maybe six, I uh, probably wouldn't buy from any other companies, although I know that other people would disagree with me. Alright, I usually buy from either Mizuno's, Brooks, or Asics because of the type of foot that I have. Okay? Um, so this is a Brooks. Um, it's a, I think it's a trail shoe. You can see it's very bendable. It's got some flexibility. Yet it's got lots of um, tread on the bottom as well as cushioning. It's got a real strong um, heel support. It's got mesh on top. Um, obviously, it's got a lacing system and such. Uh, and the uh, 
the mat, the tongue of the shoe is nice and secure because of this part right here. Um, there's more, there's more features to it than that, and you could look it up. But that's gen in general what you want to find in a running shoe. Now, this type of shoe probably costs about 120 to 140 dollars, um, but it's worth it. You do not want to get a $60 pair of shoes unless it's from the, you know, the clearance rack from two years ago. All right, um, because again, your shoes are probably the most important gear for your your running. Uh, again, Mizuno, Asics, or Brooks. Now, if you're a little bit heavier or if you just prefer them, things like a Saucony or a New Balance are also good shoes. Especially, again, if you are a little bit heavier. Uh, Saucony and New Balance are really good shoes and they last for a, a pretty long time. Um, I've also tried a brand from uh, Great Britain which is called Hoka. Um, H-O-K-A. Uh, they're also pretty good, but they're really expensive. But, you know, you notice that Nike did not make my list. Nike makes great clothing and outerwear, but for long distance running, Nike doesn't make training shoes, as far as I'm concerned. For short distance, I do. I wear Nike spikes, if I, if I were to buy spikes, because I haven't bought them in years. But if I were to buy spikes or like a short distance uh, racing flat, um, Nike's a great brand. Um, you notice that Reebok, not a chance. Reebok is basketball, it's not cross country. Um, you know, Payless, Converse, no. Okay, so get a running shoe. And if possible, if you have the funds, you probably want to go ahead and get two pairs of running shoes. So that on, say, a Monday you wear one set of shoes, on a Tuesday you wear the other set. On a Wednesday you wear the first set from Monday. And the reason why is because it takes more than 24 hours for the cushioning to get back to where it started before you ran in it. And so if you run in the same shoes every single day, you're going to break down the shoe faster. So they'll last a lot longer if you have two pair alternating than if you actually had two pair, you used one up and then you used the other one up. All right, so that was about 13 minutes. It's a long video, I know. Thank you for holding on and listening. Again, I hope that uh, you have a great training time this summer. I'll continue to make some videos, and uh, I hope this, is, this was helpful to you. Please feel free to get, send me any questions or comments. I'll be doing the best I can on this. Uh, please be patient with me. Happy running.